Hey guys, Joey here for schoolofmotion.com on behalf of the Foundry. Thank you for watching this video. This is part two in our video series that's talking about pre-multiplication in Nuke. And in part one, we explained what pre-multiplication is. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to manage it when you start color correcting things and how to get rid of some of the artifacts that can pop up if you don't treat it correctly. So let's hop into Nuke and let's get started. So here we are back in Nuke, and I've loaded in a TIFF file of this nice gradient background and an EXR file of these flowers that I rendered out of Cinema 4D. If you're unfamiliar with EXR files, uh, they're a really cool file format that most 3D apps can render. And what I love about them is, one of the things I love about them is that they are 32-bit. And 32-bit basically means that you get a lot more information about each pixel, so you can actually store color very, very precisely with 32-bit images. And the net result of that is that when you start color correcting those images, you can really push the color correction very, very hard, and you can get a lot more out of those images than you can 8 or 16-bit. So that's why this is an EXR. EXRs can also have alpha channels. So here is the alpha channel for this. And you probably already noticed that there is no background on the color channel. It has already been turned black. Now you don't see a pre-multiplication node here. So how could it be that the background has already been removed? Well, in in any 3D app, you're going to have the option of allowing the app to pre-multiply your images for you when it renders. And this is great because it saves you the step of having to use that pre-mult node. So because this has already been pre-multiplied, all we need to do to put it on this background is use a merge node. And so we will merge A over B look through the merge node, and voila, we have a perfect composite. And if you look very closely at areas like here where you have this, this very feathered um, alpha channel here, and then you look through the merge node and it looks perfect. It blends beautifully over the background exactly as you would expect. So that's the benefit of using a pre-multiplied render. Now, here's the downside. Let's say that we look at these flowers and we say, you know what, I really wanna push the contrast on them. I'm gonna color correct them. So we're gonna use a grade node for that, and the grade node is very similar to the levels effect in After Effects, if you're familiar with that. And I want you to watch when I, uh, when I start color correcting this. So watch this area right here. All right. I'm going to uh, change the white point and the black point, and I'm going to use the white point to brighten this flower. And I'm going to push the black point to get more contrast and crush those blacks a little bit. Okay. Now I've pushed this pretty hard. And what you're seeing is some very strange artifacts along the edges here. And, and you're noticing it probably even on these edges too. It's really obvious here, but even along these edges, you're starting to get these weird pixels and it's this very strange looking halo. Um, and this is what's gonna happen if you color correct something that has been pre-multiplied. Now, let's try to understand why. As we said in the first video, when you pre-multiply the colors times the alpha channel, it literally darkens the pixels. It turns pixels on the outside black and it leaves pixels on the inside untouched, but pixels along the edges here where the alpha channel is not white or black, but gray, it darkens the color. So what ends up happening is this grade node is color correcting the wrong color. It's color correcting something that has already been darkened. Color correction effects and nodes, they don't treat every color the same. It depends if a color is bright or dark, how it's gonna be hit by that color correction. So ideally, what you need to do is color correct your image before it has been pre-multiplied. In this case, what do we do? We have an image that has been pre-multiplied by Cinema 4D. How could we get that information back? Well, there's a cool node in Nuke called Unpremults, all right? And if you add that node, it brings back all of that edge information, all right? And it does this by using math and it essentially, you know, divides the color by the alpha channel. You don't really need to know that, but just see the result. It brings back the true color of that object on the edge. And it looks really strange. You get all these funky little pixels and it doesn't really look correct. But what it is doing is it's bringing back the true color. So now this grade node can color correct properly. And now if we look through the merge node, you're going to see that it doesn't look quite right yet because, you know, you still see all this weird information that we brought back in. So because we've unpremultiplied, we now need to pre-multiply. All right. And now you see our composite looks correct. Look at how this blends smoothly into the background and everything is working properly. Okay. So 
If you think of it as you're making a little sandwich, you've got unpremalt and premalt, and everything in between is doing the color correction. And just to show you what a big difference this makes, I'm going to select both of these nodes, unpremalt and premalt, and I'm going to disable them. And I want you to look at the edge here. Look at how crummy that looks, and then when I re-enable them, everything starts to look correctly again. All right, so that is how you have to manage pre-multiplied imagery. Now, there is one other way to deal with this, and that is to render things out of your 3D app, not pre-multiplied, and in Cinema 4D and other apps, they usually call that a straight alpha. If I look at this image, you can see that all of those weird pixels are baked into the render. The alpha channel looks correct, but all of the edges uh, color-wise have been left untouched. This image has not been pre-multiplied. So if you render this way, it allows you to cut out the step of unpre-multiplying. So if I just connect up our, uh, our node tree here to the straight render, we get the same result, except now we don't need the unpre-multiply node. So it saves you a little bit of a hassle. So I hope that helped you guys understand pre-multiplication a little bit better and how to manage it when you're doing color correction and doing compositing. So on behalf of School of Motion and the Foundry, thank you guys so much. I hope this was helpful and we'll see you guys soon.